Oh, not wait, the commission, but here. <laughs> not here. Craig Bannon. Here. Uh, Chris Koopman. Here. Terry. Here. Uh, Karen. Oh, Karen's muted, but she's here. Okay. Uh, Kimmy Porter. Vicki Lee Hurt. Kimmy's muted as well. I'm here. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I'd like an approval of the agenda, please. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. second. Yes. So moved. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Um, I need an approval of the minutes of the uh, last month's meeting. Any comment or questions on them? If not, let's move to approve. I make a move, motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Any corrections? And I call the, the vote on approving the minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, nay. Minutes are approved. Um, moving down to new business. We have uh, two new members tonight. Yay! And mm -hmm. Audra's going to hand handle the swearing in and the introductions. Audra? Yeah. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, yeah, we're very excited. We have two new members for uh, the Parks and Recreation Commission that will be joining us this evening. Uh, it's Vicki Lee Her and it's Christina Koopman or Chris, as she prefers to be called. And so what we're going to do is go through the formalities of the officially swearing in, and then we're going to have each of them just tell us a little bit about themselves and uh, get to know the group and maybe then go around the group and you can just say your name and, and maybe share something about yourself just so we can get to know each other because we're still under these strange circumstances of Zoom. So with that, um, I think we will start with uh, Vicki, if you're okay with that, Vicki. I will just sure. have you, if you've got your oath in front of you, I'm just going to have you read that out loud whenever you're ready. Okay. I, Vicki Lee Her, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and of the state of Minnesota and faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Commissioner of the Parks and Recreation Commission in the city of Maplewood, in the county of Ramsey, and the state of Minnesota to the best of my judgment and ability. So help me God. Thank you and welcome. You are officially sworn in. And now we'll go to you, Chris. If you have your copy in front of you, if you would like to read your oath whenever you're ready. Sure. I, Christina Koopman, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and of the state of Minnesota and faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Commissioner of the Parks and Recreation Commission in the city of Maplewood, in the county of Ramsey, in the state of Minnesota, to the best of my judgment and ability. So help me God. Thank you very much. And you are sworn in as well. Welcome to the Thank Parks and Recreation Commission. We are very happy to have both of you. Um, and then I'll circle back to you, Vicki, if you want to tell you, tell the group a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I live here in Maplewood and I um, have two kiddos, uh, a six-year-old daughter and a nine-year-old son. And my husband and I have lived in Maplewood for over 10 years. We've had three different houses in Maplewood wow. <laughs> and hopefully this is our long-term home. Um, we have a big goal um, that we started last year and we're trying to visit every single park in Maplewood and we haven't quite made it there, but hopefully this summer we'll get to it. And uh, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Any questions for Vicki? Otherwise we'll move on to uh, Chris, go ahead, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I grew up uh, in, in the next door state of Wisconsin, but I've been here since my early 20s. And for 10 years, I lived in the southern part of um, Minnesota. And then for the last several years, I've lived in the Roseville Maplewood area. So I've been in Maplewood for about the last two years. And I feel very blessed that I'm very lucky to the Gateway Trail and the Bruce Fentome Trail, which are absolutely gorgeous and fantastic in the summer. So um, I enjoy running, biking. Um, I have a couple triathlons on my schedule for the summer. So Wow. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions for Chris? Otherwise, I'll just call on you. That way you won't know who just be. I'll just kind of go in order and you can 
share a little something about yourself. So Dorothy, if you wanna go first. Sure. Um, I've lived in this house in Maple Wood for um, eight years last month. Um, have lived in the area, have lived in South Maplewood for a number of years. Always been interested in park and recreation and nature activities um, and was pleased to be appointed probably some six years ago, I think. Marjorie, has it been that long? Oh, wow, yeah. Um, to the park and rec board. I think Maplewood has such a wonderful park system and <clears throat> I think it's important that we understand what it is and that we work hard to maintain it and have it recognized by the rest of our residents. That's it. Thank you, Dorothy. I'll call on Terry next and then Kimmy after that. So Terry, if you would want to go ahead. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Hi, I'm Terry Millette and I've lived in Maplewood for over 30 years and I've been on the Parks and Rec Board, I think at least eight years, maybe longer. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Um, I've done a lot of coaching. Um, we use the parks all the time when my kids were younger. Now I'm using the parks again with my little cousin's little boy. Um, I live on the Bruce Ventral Trail. We use that all the time. And I think we have wonderful parks here in Maplewood and I'm glad you guys are both joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. And then Kimmy, go ahead. I am Kimmy Porter and I've been living in South Maplewood since 2004. I've lost track of how many years I've been on the commission. I think I'm my fourth. Yep, I think so. Okay. And uh, I just want to say welcome. All right. Thanks so much. All right. And then I'll go Craig next and then Karen. So Craig, if you'd want to just introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Craig Brannon. Um, I've lived in Maplewood for about 28 years. I've been on the commission for... 26 or 27. I too have kind of lost track. World record. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to coach soccer a lot when my kids were younger, but um, I'm hoping for grandkids in the near future. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks, Craig. And Karen, if you could just tell us a little something about yourself. Sure. Hi, I'm Karen, and nice to meet you, Vicki and Chris. Uh, welcome to the Parks and Recs Commission. And um, going to be a nice time having you with us. Thanks. Right. Perfect. Well, with that, Dorothy, I'm going to turn it back over to you. And we have a, a full <laughs> complement of commissioners tonight. So we can and we have nothing to vote on. <laughs> 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 okay, the next item under new business is garden in a box. And I suspect Audra is going to introduce that for us. And we'll find out what it's about that I am. Uh, so tonight we have a Molly Miller with us. She is a Maplewood resident and she's also on the Environmental and Natural Resources Commission. Um, and she has obtained a grant from the Minnesota State Horticulture Society called Garden in a Box Program. Um, it's to have raised garden beds to serve the Crane families living in the Mississippi apartments. Um, and she is seeking the, the Parks Commission's approval to at least for a temporary place to be putting these uh, 16 of these raised beds in the Mississippi play area. And um, a little bit more background of that is, um, as far as background for how the city would support this, the Maplewood Comprehensive Plan and the Park System Master Plan encourages and promotes local food growing, including community gardens. And our city code permits gar community gardens under one acre in any zoning district as a permitted use. And so um, the use of these, uh, the play area for these 16 garden beds would help the city achieve those goals. And I don't wanna take too much from what Molly's gonna tell you. So I will just say that um, Molly works with the Roseville School District at Edgerton Elementary, which is actually in Maplewood. Um, and so they have some of these gardens already that they've been doing for quite a number of years at Edgerton. So she'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that and, and how, why this program is so important. Um, for, for the families that live in those Mississippi apartments. So with that, I think Molly, I am just gonna turn it over to you. Oh, great, thank you. That was really yeah. awesome, thanks. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Molly Miller. I live in Maplewood um, on Kenwood Avenue, 1861 Kenwood Avenue, um, Drive West actually. Um, and I have lived here since, hmm, this will be my eighth year. COVID is kind of, fried my brain I've, that I've lost that year somewhere, <laughs> as most people have, I think. Um, I've been on the um, 
Environmental Natural Resource Commission for, let's see, since 2014, I believe. Um, and um, a lot of the goals, um, I was on the steering committee in the um, uh, uh, comprehensive plan committee and all that stuff too. So um, this is just something that I was um, always been very interested in. I love working with kids. I too coach a ton of kids and I use it. I'm a behavior person at the middle school now at Roseville area middle school. And I've worked at Harambe, which is also in Maplewood and Edgerton, which is in Maplewood, even though they're Roseville school district. And um, let's see. I have two boys, uh, 11 and almost 14, which is awesome. Um, and I just, I live on the Gateway Trail. Um, I actually purchased some land so it wouldn't go too commercial along the Gateway Trail. Um, I had to raise a whole bunch of money. Gotta love that, <laughs> do that. But it's worth it because who needs to see buildings on that, you know? Um, and I guess I can just get going if you don't mind. I can just show you, okay. I just prepared something. I kind of threw um, my notebooks worth of notes onto a little uh, presentation for you. And I hope it goes as well as I'm hoping it will. Let me share my screen here. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's not big enough. There we go. All right. So get moving here on this. Maybe. And of course, I'm trying to move and it won't. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I don't know why it's not moving. That's all right. And one thing I'll say while Molly is getting ready with that, um, the grant was, I believe, and Molly, you can correct me if I'm wrong, was for 30 of these uh, raised garden beds. And um, the original location that they were hoping to have was very close to the apartments, either right in front of the apartments um, or even in the right of way across the, the street by the, the highway fencing. But when both of those locations weren't feasible, um, Molly came to us with a possible other location, which would be the Mississippi uh, play area, which is very near the apartments. And so, um, and she has a home for 14 of them, I believe. So 16 would be left, but so we'd be looking at putting 16 in the Mississippi play area. So sorry, Molly, I'll turn it back over to you. No, that's great. Thank you very much. I don't know why, but the roller on my mouse is not working. So that's what's happening. Um, so this is, we're just kind of calling it Mississippi uh, Street. Well, I've been calling it the garden party because every time I go, um, I, I go to work with kids there quite a bit once or twice a week. Uh, and they've, they've had some challenges over there um, with the free, can you hear me? My little yes, thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Maybe a little yeah. louder. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, actually I can also, also see that. Um, I've been working with those families since they were at Edgerton, um, or since I was at Edgerton, I mean. So since 2014. And so I've gotten a, a pretty good um, uh, a relationship with a lot of the families there and I just adore them. And um, they have had a lot of uh, difficulties with um, COVID and, and food and that kind of thing. And it's sort of a food desert. It seems like it's close to Cub Foods, but it's really not, especially in the winter time. <clears throat> and they are, they are amazing um, growers of garden foods. If you ever happen to be in that area and you look in their windows, they have stacked clear totes of gardens growing. And so I asked them, if would it be helpful to have more garden space, even if it's a little bit, just so they could grow their plants um, a little bit more of a variety and then bring them in for the winter time. So um, a lot of the same families were involved with Edgerton. And I'm just going to kind of read this through because I don't know if you can see it. I know some of you are on your phone. So I'll just read it quick for you. Um, this project is focused on building relationships, learning each other's stories, constructing a lasting bridge between elementary and middle school for kids and their families. Making this a community partnering will help create a safer community and supportive village for Corinne families in the Mississippi Street area. <clears throat> Our goals, um, part of um, the issues with COVID is nobody had a really good um, relationship with 
that community except for me. So I would just go there every week and they weren't getting what they needed. It's, 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 uh, um, as it was hard for a lot of people this year. So um, we had a think tank and we were trying to figure out ways to communicate more. And, and because I was a special ed para and I also did the lunchroom, I knew a lot of them. And I said, you know, it would be kind of great for them to do sort of a trusted transfer between the schools. And so the paras, I talked to the principals and um, we got the principals from both schools to dedicate staff and staff time to do one of these gardens, which basically we go and work on them with them. And it just creates um, kind of a, an open door and they can start to recognize faces in middle school and get to know the teachers a little bit better. And <clears throat> um, it seems so far to be um, a really good thing. So create an outreach project um, that includes support and participation from local leaders, city of Maplewood safety and support staff, Roseville area school staff and other key people who represent, make decisions and provide resources to this Karen community. Um, sustain an ongoing relationship with these entities so the transition from elementary school to middle school feels safer, their needs and ideas are heard. Um, and providing opportunities for RAM staff and others to learn about and from our Karen neighbors, an organized combined effort to provide equitable and accepted opportunities for them as well. Um, and get members of this Karen community to have leadership role in their own lives there. So um, just some, I'm not gonna read all this for you, but I, I will send you the presentation. Um, each of the gardens is, um, they're round, but they're made of uh, chicken wire. So you can bend them and make them shapes or hook them together. But um, it comes as a round, it's only three feet across. So you can reach across it. Um, in diameter. So they're pretty small, but you can learn a lot. It comes with, um, um, excuse me, a curriculum that you can use. It comes with free classes at the U of M Horticulture Society. Um, and I, anybody who's interested in gardening in their own home, you can get from one to 10 at your own home and everything is free. The compost, the soil, the seeds, the plant um, starters and um, even compost tea, which is really cool. And um, and like all the information, and if you need volunteers, they can provide that as well. So I just have, um, why is this being so weird today? I just had these all open, I swear. Um, so I did have some pictures on here, which I can't access now that it's open. Hmm. Well, I'll just move on then. Um, Let's see. So here's the um, first thing I did was to see if there was interest and um, a desire for commitment. And so I, like I said, I spoke to the <clears throat> the principals. And actually, if you are aware of the AVID program, um, Roseville Area Middle Schools is an AVID demonstration school. So it's community outreach, um, community involvement. Um, they actually have community hours to do. And um, my contact for them is Tana, and she is actually agreed to be my second um, contact. So she is providing and dedicating the AVID site team um, teachers with their classes to spend time there. So we have um, a schedule being built right now. <clears throat> so it's ongoing participation. And their responsibility is encouraging staff to attend and participate in management of the gardens. Um, and Edgerton staff, Principal Coland, um, also, he was really excited and he said that he would himself participate and encourage other um, of the staff to do so as well as part of the, the kids already trust us and we want to make sure that they have a good communication and smooth transition into middle school. Um, I also connected with the KOM, the Corinne of Minnesota, because um, as anyone knows, it's much better if you assist people in what they already know how to do. So I can get them the materials and um, they are more than capable <clears throat> of um, running it themselves. Um, and we're just here to kind of help and make sure that they are not in need of anything. So um, Ege at Corinna, Minnesota is my contact person there and she's the community outreach person. And she is keeping track of all of the, who the gardens are assigned to. Um, and if there's a language barrier or a culture barrier, she will come in and do um, explanation and provide resources 
for the teachers to, communi to communicate as well as the, the families to communicate with us. So there's um, a little bit more of a <clears throat> relationship building there. Um, Officer Emily, that's what all the kids were calling her. Um, Emily Burt McGregor, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized I didn't put her last name on there. I'm like, oh, whoops, because every all the kids were calling her Officer Emily. Um, she is really excited about the program as well, and um, she already is putting it on the calendar um, for police officers to stop by when events are happening. And they did; they've come by twice already, so it's pretty exciting. And then I actually. <laughs> I started it, but I haven't put my name in there yet because I want to make sure that if there's anybody else who wants to be part of the um, ENRC um, contact, they can be. Um, and then, of course, the Minnesota Horticulture Society, um, and they are their responsibilities are to provide the materials. They have accountability tracking. Um, they because one of the fears with everyone is to have these gardens kind of uh, not be taken care of, so it becomes an eyesore and a problem and. We have a monthly report, um, just a real short, take some pictures, tell us what's happening, what's growing, what's not growing, um, and how many people who are involved. Are they kids? Are they adults? That kind of thing. So she does a lot of data collection. And if we don't respond, we lose our, they come and get the stuff. And so we um, have to provide all this stuff. And they have three years of continuing support and materials and actually beyond that as well. Um, whether the gardens are where I'm hoping to put them. Um, I'm hoping it's just temporary because um, it really would be more advantageous, admit, advantageous, oh my goodness. You got it. <laughs> um, closer to the buildings. Um, and I'm hoping I can get the picture up here in a second. Um, so when I send this to you, and I clicked on all these before I even got on here, but. Um, and Molly, see. just to let you know that there was a the picture that you included in the packet. The the commissioners can see that. So if we don't have one oh. for at home, they they okay. have a photo in their packet. Okay, and I did open up the links in here, so anybody who has the link can look, because I put in. Um, I've been doing it for Edgerton now. This will be the fifth year, and it was due to a real need for kids to be <clears throat> not just outside, but I work in behavior and um, really and and I think maybe especially because you guys are a park commission if you are getting really stressed out i know that if i step outside into nature i take a big deep breath and things kind of calm down and everything just feels like you can handle it a little bit better and i started doing more of the outdoor stuff with the kids that had some you know adhd that kind of stuff and we really worked um with nature and they're allowing me to to expand that um, so those have been there for five years and then right in the middle, which is going to happen, um, they had to do construction. And so the um, gardens are really easy to pull up. You just pull up the outside and you can either scoop out the dirt, which is what we did, scooped out the dirt so it wouldn't leave a mess and moved them. And they had construction for a year and then we put them back and um, Horticulture Society of Minnesota gave us more dirt to fill them back up. So it's not hard to move them if something needs to be moved. Um, we would like to not have to do that, but you know, like I said, the, the part where I'm hoping to have them now is on that little park that's on the North side of Mississippi street, just before County B there. <clears throat> and, um, it's, there's, I think Sean was talking about the part that's right on the other side of the building, but that actually, um, is slanted facing North. So that doesn't work. So that's why we have the area that we have highlighted. Um, but when you get the chance to check out these links, um, we did, we do, um, every year we have, uh, freshen it up and that will be happening this coming week for Edgerton. Um, the classrooms come out and do, um, curriculum with them. And, um, I have some pictures for you there. Um, and then the garden in a box, that link will just be, um, the website of Garden in a Box. So you can look at all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I did pull out the requirements and commitments for Garden in a Box. And I see I have it backwards there, the little backwardsness. Um, but I would, maybe it'll, no. Nope. Um, <laughs> one of those. <laughs> um, but it's it shows that um, the uh, accountability part of it. 
and hopefully I'll be able to open that up later um, when I stop sharing. And then just sort of the timeline of what I've been doing. I applied for the grant back in December. Um, I did some outreach for possible partners back in February after I received the grant. And then um, then I just, I just have it hooked up to like initial email, which I think you guys got um, welcoming the partners with a sign up form. And then I have pictures from Dirt Day, which is the first day we got all the stuff and all of the different pictures of all of the different teachers and families that came out to help. And it was it was really successful and they're really excited to get planting. So right now, um, Edgerton's principal allowed us to store the dirt right now <clears throat> by the gardens that I have there. And they're, you know, roped off and, and stacked neatly. And the kids did that, if you can believe it. But I have kids coming back from high school to help. So it's just, it's a great outreach opportunity. And um, I hope that you guys see that as well. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I have a question. Um, yeah. Is there an issue with being able to access water? I mean, do you need to water these? Or I know you said that you might, you wanted it nearest the buildings. I assume that's why. Um, Sean, oh. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, Sean suggested that. Um, I didn't want to impede on um, the and building. Molly, just for a second, I know Sean is very close to you, but I don't know, just so everyone at home knows who Sean is. Ben well, I'm ben sorry. is our environmental planner, and she's also the staff liaison for the Environmental Commission. So that, and she was also involved in trying to, to find an alternative site and help Molly with this. So yeah, just so I'm they know sorry. who Sean is. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yeah, um, she is, she, oh my gosh. She is so amazing at her job, and she has really been helping me try to brainstorm some situations here. <clears throat> um, they, um, I forgot what I was saying. Yes, water. Okay. Um, so right now, in during the school year, um, we have access to a hose um, at Edgerton, but most of the time we do not. And so the families already who are involved in those, um, everybody gets like a, a milk gallon jug. And that's, I mean, if they're, the gardens are so small, you only really need one of those. And so they just, they carry it from their house, which would be just down the street. And um, that's all they need, or I provide it for them. Um, and then when I visit, I visit every week, um, and then there will be a schedule of other people coming. And when we come, we have the big tank. It's not huge, but it's big enough for the gardens. So we do have access to it. And um, part of what the teachers are working with the kids on is uh, weather. And so, you know, do you need to plan to water your plants? That kind of thing. You know, can you see what the weather is? Can you see where the jet stream is going? So it's kind of cool. But yes, no valid. I have a rain garden bucket, but, um, or a rain barrel, but I don't know if I'm going to need it. It's, it's very small, but, you know, I don't think we're going to probably need it there because they're pretty close to home. Any other questions? I have one thing to add with this. Again, this is kind of a little bit of scrambling just to, to find a location right now for um, these with the end goal, like Molly had said, to, to have them over closest to the apartments and, and working with the, the, the apartment owners to let tenants keep them and that kind of thing. But um, so this is the grant, Molly, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but the grant is a three-year program, but we're not asking for, right. a, she's not asking for a commitment for three years here, but just for this season. So this season isn't a loss to, to kind of go to, this is plan C and, and find a spot, you know, in the, in the Mississippi, it used to be called Mississippi tot lot. That's really a little bit of play equipment. There's really not much else there. Um, but just to have these gardens in there and then maybe, encourage the families to utilize that play area a little bit more because uh, from my understanding Molly you said it's not really utilized too much by the family so maybe it would get um, some people over into the the park area and using the equipment and kind of have a multi-generational activities happening at the same time and so um, but just because it is on public you know park land we don't we wanted to make sure to bring it to the commission to have you weigh in and just uh hear your thoughts and concerns and any questions you would have, but this would be kind of a, a, a fluid project evolving and, and kind of, you know, I've, like Molly said, asking the questions about making sure they're maintained, that the city doesn't have any expectations for our park maintenance to maintain them. It sounds like there's a good core group of volunteers and people, teachers and 
volunteers to support it. And then um, depending how, you know, things go tonight, um, then we would look at meeting with the park maintenance staff just to look at the best place to put these and how to put them for maintenance for mowing and that kind of thing. So um, it would be for this season and then evaluating at the end and then hopefully, you know, maybe other spots will open up so it's not an issue or maybe it becomes a really good location, but just evaluating the project toward the end of, of this growing season. So does that sound I, about right, Molly? Yes, that's perfect. And actually I was, since I had talked to you earlier, I was just thinking, so at the end of the growing season, <clears throat> we have to do a survey over how it went and how much we've um, harvested. And I was just thinking that might be, if you'd like me to return at that time and kind of give you an update on what's happening um, and how it went. And if there was, you know, the participation we were expecting or if we were gonna move them or any information that you guys may want at that time, um, I can do that if you'd like. I can get on the calendar for that. I think that would be a great idea. Um, Audra? Yes. Are you looking for um, an actual motion from us to allow the the boxes to be put on that playground um, area? Not necessarily a, an official motion, but just to get feedback from the commission if, if there's support or concern or questions just before, because this is kind of a little bit of a last minute thing. So it wasn't something we just wanted to, to do without bringing it to the commission and, and letting you, you know, your recommendations. I think it sounds last minute and very well planned. Um, I congratulate you for scrambling and solving a problem. And it sounds like it would be an excellent place to place them. I agree. I thought it was a good idea. I think it's a wonderful. Go ahead. Oh, I think it's a wonderful idea as well. And I think it's very well thought out and very well uh, researched. And I do think it will be wildly successful and hopefully there'll be expansion in the future. I did have um, one question. Maybe it, it was gone over or I missed it. Um, is there going to be any issue with like fertilization or bringing fertilizer in? And would it be any issue of contaminating um, the water table or, or anything like of that nature? Okay, good question. Um, I'm glad you asked that because I don't think I said anything. So um, thank you. Um, the way that these gardens are made, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is that it is like that weed paper, not paper, like the, um, it's that black paper that you put down so things don't grow through it. You know what I'm talking about? But like water like a weed mat. Yeah. Yes, like you. a weed mat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, it's made out of that and chicken wire, basically. And there's enough to coat the bottom so the um, the soil doesn't run out. And part of the dirt um, that the Horticulture Society gives us the first year, they give six 40-pound um, bags of dirt of soil and then four pounds or four 40-pound bags of compost. And then the second year of maintenance um, would be to um, utilize that same um, uh, dirt, and then they give another bag of compost or two bags of compost, depending on what it is. Um, and then they also have compost tea. And the cool thing about this is everything's organic, and there's no pesticides, no weed kill, you know, nothing like that. Um, and even the um, the seeds that are being grown are, oh my gosh, not heritage. Why? I was just, just going to say it. Heirloom. Heirloom. Thank you. Yes. A lot of them are heirloom and they're grown by the Horticulture Society during the year inside. And so they're all by seed and they're just, they're beautiful and they like produce like crazy. It's so wonderful. But yeah, um, that is a concern of mine as well because it is by the drain. Um, although the drain is uphill a little bit, so it wouldn't be going into the drain. The drain. Um, I made sure that the gardens that we got this year had the flaps that came down so the soil won't come out. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. I hadn't even mentioned it. Thank you. Do you have any concerns of people damaging or wrecking it? <laughs> I don't know how, how you word that. Yeah. No. Vandalizing, maybe. Vandalizing. Vandalizing. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a weird thing. I thought for sure that they would be um, at Edgerton because it's in the, like, it's open to the right. park and they have so much activity. And the only thing that happened at all was um, 
a kid who's from who was from the school actually got mad and ripped out a tomato cage. And honestly, that is the only thing in five oh, good. years. Good. Okay. Um, I, it's cool because if you have it planted by their homes, they sort of protect it. Good. Okay. And it's it's really cool. And honestly, the one that got ripped out, like when the kids noticed, they I, I come on the weekends a lot of times, and um, and the <laughs> encouragement mobile. I have bubbles and sidewalk chalk and all this stuff. <laughs> And music and it's just goofy um but the kids like all helped to fix that one and it was just oh, it was really sweet oh good yeah i have a question that kind of goes along with that is there anything more that we can do to be helpful so the critters don't get in there and help themselves um they're kind of what we figured out at edgerton is if i don't if we don't fill the dirt all the way like we don't put all 10 bags in we just put like seven it's down pretty far and it kind of preserves the soil a little bit better from erosion, from wind, and it keeps it a little bit more moist. And um, honestly, I we haven't had any problems up here at all, but that's a good point. And we could probably put netting over the top too. But a lot of the families, um, I'm really hoping that they, um, I shouldn't just say hoping, they're they're chomping at the bit actually for this. They're very excited. <laughs> um, they, they have, um, like little netting things that they want to put over them. And it's really up to them as long as there's no garbage. So that's that's the one rule is it have to, has to be left better than we find it, so. Thank you. Sure, and Molly, I think, I think you, uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, but um, one question I had had earlier was if they're all spoken for or if people oh. taking ownership and, and Molly's let me know that every one of them is spoken for, so. Yep. And actually it's really cool because some of the families want to hook them so it just makes like an oval and so they can like grow all one thing on one side. And then have you ever like seen the, um, the three sisters that are grown together because they benefit each other, the plants, like with the, the, the different heights and stuff, they're, they're called um, uh, um, symbiotic sisters or something like that, where they're like different plants that actually benefit each other. Like some are, you know, like the mint would make the deer not come, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and there's these couple of families are trying to figure out if they can have theirs next to each other so they can do that. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. But yes, they're all they're all spoken for now except for three. And I kind of wanted to keep those three not spoken for in case some families move in. And until that happens, um, I have a... Uh, um, we usually have one that's compost. So all the um, weeds and stuff that they pull, they have a place to put it to compost it. So that's what we have at Edgerton is one of them is a compost one. So I thought that might help with any kind of other trash as in weeds and stuff. They didn't want big gobs of weeds on the sidewalk or the street. So, yep, all but three. What is the selection process of the families? Um, actually, it was just open at first. Um, okay. They knew about it from Edgerton, where it was um, every classroom had one that wanted one. Um, and we just did a survey. And we actually, um, the KOM are um, kind of making those decisions with the families, because if they have access to other, like community gardens, they're giving um, primary um, spots and gardens to the people who live right there. and. Um, we did actually have 30 families and now some of them are putting them on uh, uh, resident properties where they have like family or something like that. So um, we had them, fill, it was like first come first serve kind of a thing. Um, one of the buildings actually had a fire in it a couple of weeks ago. And so we gave the, um, the six families in that building priority so they could grow some food. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Molly, what kinds of things are they growing? I'm sorry? What kinds of things are they typically growing? Oh, cool. Um, a whole bunch of different kinds of heirloom tomatoes. Um, the ones that like are that have the little ones, they have the yellow ones. Um, this year is the first year that we actually asked um, in a survey. Um, Courtney from the uh, Horticulture Society did a survey um, with the KOM about culturally what would they want like spices and peppers and stuff like that and so there's some things that I don't even know what they are um 
so they are there are some culturally relevant things um a lot of them are for tea so lavender mint stevia that kind of thing a million things of peppermint <laughs> um we have bell peppers um jalapeno peppers i have a death star um chili which i have no that scares me <laughs> and i don't know what that looks like yet it's just this big and green um and then we do have they do have some flowers they have um oh that was what the other two gardens were for i'm so sorry i didn't even say that i have adhd pretty bad and my medicine is out now <laughs> um we wanted to put um at each end a pollinator garden um just to kind of have that have it so it's always blooming even if the food isn't blooming um and so there's pollinator flowers there is um let's see green yeah there's there's snap peas so they can put up a little trellis there's um squash spaghetti squash gourds which is really fun and we're growing those at edgerton for the music thing so they can do little sh rattle stuff um a whole bunch of stuff and then they can also plant their own stuff there so they each have about five plants designated per garden, but if they don't want them, somebody else can have them and they can plant their own thing too. Right. Molly, what about signage? Is that, does the Horticultural Society provide any signage so that we can establish a sense of place like what this project is so it's not just a bunch of these circular gardens out there, especially since it is in the park area? Yes, thank you. Um, and if we, if I could have opened my thing, which is being really weird now and saying I need to close it down for update. Did you know it? Um, yes, there is one of those yard sign kind of things. And it says garden in a box with all of their partners, including the Horticulture Society. And um, and if you look at the one that's on the back side of the shed at Edgerton, which might be on the thing you guys have, there's a little white sign in the middle that I have up on the, on the table there. Okay. And that's what that is. And so it's not super huge and gaudy and it doesn't really blow away. Or but it, it lets people know what's happening and what it is. And Right. Okay. Yep. Hey, Molly, with it being so close to the uh, play structure there, are mm -hmm. there any concerns with safety for little kids being around that at all? Or do you guys have any precautions set up for that? Um, actually, they're all pliable and I've had kids tumble into them. Um, they, even the chicken wire is covered with that, that stuff. And, um, I, it's pretty, the spot that I'm asking for is actually on the other side of the drainage thing from the, the tot lot thing, the playground structure. Um, so I don't think that they would come down there, um, too much anyway, but the kids at, on, on that street, if they are in public school, they go to Edgerton and they've already been, they already know about them through school and they've had some education with them already. So I think it's actually gonna be more of a, look what's growing, look what's growing. <laughs> and they had everything is like, there's nothing poison, there's nothing like that. So that's, it's all safe to, to be around. And, and that's one reason we would have them meet with the park maintenance crew, just to, to find the best location, make sure, you know, with our, our playground safety inspectors we have on staff, just that it's distance far enough away. And, and that's why we'll, we would have a meeting on site to determine where they would best go you know like again it wasn't the ideal situation for them but i'm thinking we can maybe get creative and, and find a way to to fit them in that area so but we would definitely do it with the park maintenance staff and go out there and, and figure out the best layout that would be great that would be fantastic and like i said any input or ideas are are welcome um and if we want um I mean, there's so many things because they they are flexible. Like you can shape them into, you know, like if you want to go up into a corner or something, you can do that, you know. Um, or if you want to hook them together, you can. So it's just it's whatever they decide. It's gonna it's gonna be able to work um, as long as the families get um, the stuff they're using for. But if we have a l little bit more families, then we'll give up those last three. <laughs> Yeah, I think the idea overall, Molly, is really great. Um, my parents are also from Southeast Asia. And so even though they've been here for over 40 years, they still do love to garden in the summer. And it's a great hobby for them. And it's a good family gathering. We all help out. And so I think it's a really great opportunity. Thank you. And I got to tell you, this is really funny. 
but I have never learned so much from someone I couldn't communicate with verbally as gardening That's with awesome. the families there. It is amazing. Like I, I am learning so much on what to garden and how to garden, like the, the plants that pair together um, and stuff like that. There's this one lady who comes out every single time and she is just, I don't even know who she is. I mean, she lives in the buildings, but she's, um, uh, she, she comes out every time and somebody was worried one time that they had uh, mold in the bottom and she, she walked over and cut a piece of their hair and put it in there and said that would fix it. <laughs> and I was like, really? And I looked it up and I'm like, she's totally absolutely right. That's crazy. That's awesome. Like, I'm, I just think it's really cool because um, they will get to make the decisions about it, you know? And then a lot of them asked if they could bring the dirt and the plants in, in the winter. So they absolutely can. And then they'll just continue growing too. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Molly. Um, does anyone else have any comments or questions for Molly? If you think of anything later, my email is on the Environmental Commission list. So just shoot one to me and I can answer anything. Or if you want to come participate, that would be wonderful too. Okay, thank you, Molly. Okay, thank um, you. Bye guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next item under new business is Vista Hills Tennis Court Replacement, Audra? Yes. So we have long had an issue of trying to get the tennis courts we have in Maplewood up to up to code and in good shape. We have many that were put in over 20 years ago and maybe didn't have the best maintenance over the years and have gotten to the point of, of past, you know, a point of no return and uh, just trying to prioritize what to do with these tennis courts and as most of you know some of them have been taken out at Playcrest Park and at Maplecrest um, some have been completely been, been rebuilt like Sherwood uh, tennis courts um, and that's kind of the plan is we want to try to have tennis courts and with pickleball lines available in each of our service areas as part of the Harvest Park master plan um, we also looked at turning the tennis courts that exist there into uh, pickleball designated pickleball site. So that would be another potential traditional tennis court loss. So just trying to figure out the best mix of keeping them. And then when COVID hit, um, it kind of changed the perspective a little bit on tennis because it was one of the first sports and outdoor activities that people could do because of the distancing. So it, it a lot more people were playing tennis and it kind of had a resurgence. So it's, it's had us rethinking some of what we do. Um, and in that mix, we had had the Vista Hills Tennis Court. There are two on the south end of Maplewood that need a complete redo at Pleasant View and at Vista. And after examining them and, and, and figuring out which would be the first on the list, it was Vista Hills. Um, and then it was put in our CIP um, budget for uh, 2021. And then it was moved to 2022 during COVID. And, and our projects for 2020 were all put on hold except for the Nature Center improvements. And then for this year, originally it had just been the 150,000 for open space improvements, but nothing else. But with things opening up and, you know, just getting a better handle on where our budget was and where the city was financially, uh, the good news is they just recently decided that it would be okay to go forward with the Vista Hill tennis and, and basketball court replacement this year yet. So to me, that was really exciting news. I'm going to share my screen here. I have an overhead view of the tennis courts. The picture doesn't do it justice, but um, hang on one second. Let me know. Can you see it? Yep. My screen. Um, those dark areas are discoloration, aka mold, other things on the tennis court. Um, the lines that you see, those are deep cracks in the courts. Um, the corners you can see are peeling away that the uh, wind fencing if you will um is is peeling down and the basketball court next to it you can see is in quite a state of um disrepair and that's another thing we don't have a lot of tennis courts in maplewood anymore over the years some were taken out and moved and that's another people are outside more and wanting to play outdoors especially when the gyms were closed to rentals and things and so um there's definitely a need to refurbish some of our tennis courts or our basketball courts as well. So I'm going to 
stop sharing that. Uh, so let me just say, Adra, last week, my family and I drove around to eight different tennis courts and they were all taken. And so we could not play tennis. Okay. So right. this is it, great. It's, it's just crazy. <laughs> when we did the park systems master plan, it was, oh, tennis is dying. It's not, it's a lot of concrete and space for a sport that few people are playing. And so the plan was to maybe phase them out. And then just this last year, tennis has exploded again and the need is there. So I'm really excited that I'm hoping we can, I can get some quotes and we can get this done yet um, this summer. I'm guessing they might be pretty busy, but I'm going to do my best to, um, to move forward with this. So I just wanted to share that with the group and um, kind of tell you the why it was Vista Hills versus Pleasant View were one of the other tennis courts. And then we're going to be making a concerted effort to keep up with the maintenance. You know, we, we, we did Maplewood Heights, we redid Harvest. Um, and we even did a little bit of surface repair on those a couple of years ago, but just to keep up on the repairs that were made before they get to the point of no return, because it's kind of like the roads in Minnesota, tennis courts have a tough time with the cold, you know, the summers are hot and then the freezing and, and, and just, it, it's, it's an ongoing maintenance struggle, but, um, we're committed to having, we wanted to have less tennis courts but do really well with the ones that we have and again make sure we're having good tennis courts in every surf, surf, uh, service area of Maplewood so any questions about that okay okay then we can move on to unfinished business no, none. none visitor presentations None commissioner presentations. I just want to make a comment. I um, spent Thursday night last week with a three year old at our Wakefield Park, and oh boy, what a great job they did! And it was packed, it was so there were so many people, and what a great park that turned out to be. Okay. Great. Oh, I had a question about Gethsemane. Sure. Oh, I, I'm gonna, yeah, you know, yeah. I have that in my, my park updates, but yeah, we can start okay, with that. No, no, I can wait. Okay. Yeah, Terry, you're a good segue into my update on the parks and then yeah. the sad news we have to share. So if does anyone else have any commissioner comments or things they want to discuss before we move on? I do, Audra, but is it, sure. um, did you want to segue into the news or? Because oh, no, but I just have it in the updates as the last item on the agenda. So if you have something, go ahead. Yes, uh, when we were preparing and reviewing our goals, I remember making a suggestion and it didn't make it to the goal sheet, but it's just something I've been thinking about. Initially, I was talking about signage in our parks um, and I've rethought that because I was thinking maybe we could do it where it's culturally appropriate considering whatever the holiday or the celebration may be. I know that Juneteenth is coming up. I, there are other things coming up, but I thought about um, what about some basic signs that say kindness or that say courage or just, I mean, is that a possibility? Um, and I kind of took this idea from a park in uh, Minneapolis where they went in and they did some signages to represent uh, different cultural activities. But just seeing T-shirts that say kindness kind of makes you smile. And I'm wondering, our parks are so beautiful that if people are walking around, um, would, could there be? something that didn't cost a lot of money that could go up so are you, are you thinking like a like a not an ad campaign but like a psa where they would be like kind of the the board signs that stake into the ground that could be switched out or are you I, thinking like permanent i'm not thinking permanent okay. right now i i think if they go up and people enjoy them and we get if we get some feedback at some point maybe look at them permanent but right now i'm just looking for something inexpensive to spread that to kind of get that message out in the parts. Sure. And that would be something as a commission, we could discuss what you would want them to say or what, what the message would be. And we could take it from there for sure. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Can we get that as a item on the agenda for discussion next sure. month? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And then you want to do staff updates? Yep, if no one else has, and I will just do my end of meeting updates. Um, and we'll start with Gethsemane. I don't know if all of you are aware, but on late in the evening, on May 7th, that Friday, um, 
uh, the playground was set on fire and um, extensive damage was done to the main play structure. I'm, I'm shocked that the, the play rocks, that, you know, the created rocks didn't get burned and the swing set wasn't burned down and only one park bench went down, but it was still pretty extensive damage. And that park is, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's, it's at Gethsemane, but that's a park where we have land that we share with Gethsemane Lutheran School. And so it's well used by the the neighborhood and the children there at the school. So it was devastating. It was a, a park that was part of the street improvements, the Bartomey Street improvements back in 2012. Um, so they were able to get this really nice playground and, and it was a Girl Scout troop of neighborhood kids who picked the design. So the neighborhood has been very involved in, in calling and concern and they're willing to help in any way they can. Um, so we've, we've been working this all last week. I was working with getting it inspected and working with the playground company to um, see if they could replace it because 2012 and luckily the, the play equipment is still available so they could resort almost exactly to how it was if, you know, if we go that route. And so we have the claims adjuster out, but the, the quote for what it would take to replace it and put it back to where it was right now, it's, it's a little over a hundred thousand dollars. So it's, it was a lot of, and that wasn't even all of the playground. It was the main structure because it had a lot of uh, like tree canopies with plastic on top and things. And so it was, it was sad and, and they haven't caught anyone. I don't know that they will. Some witnesses said that they saw two juveniles running away from the, the park during that time. And the lighter was found um, near the playground. But so some sad news, but what was heartening to me was all the neighbors that were concerned and really took ownership of their playground and called and said, if there's anything we can do, they wanted to start a GoFundMe page right away. And I, I said, you know, I, I so appreciate that you take so much interest in this. So um, right now we're working with the League of Minnesota Cities insurance and, and all of that. And we are working with the playground um, company. And again, they're really busy this time of year. So but, you know, they're willing to, if we go forward with it, to be able to try to fit us in yet this year. So hopefully, depending on how things turn out, there's a potential to have it replaced by fall. So that's kind of where we are right now with the playground. But if you have any questions or. I did see there was some some man on TV talking about it. And he said, I think it's about 20,000. And I'm thinking a lot more than that i saw that too i'm like oh i wish i wish there was <laughs> yeah, only 20. Like, i think it's a lot more than 20. yeah so sad well i think people don't realize even just that engineered wood fiber that's made safe for kids to that playground surfacing to fill that container again after having to take the contaminated stuff out it's about eight thousand dollars just for the wood fiber and i think that shocks a lot of people and then the spongy play surface like we have at Wakefield, some of it, it's not the entire playground because that is three, four times the price. So, yeah. So it was a sad thing. It was good to see the neighbors kind of rally together and um, we're just kind of in the beginning stages of seeing what we can do to, to make it right. Any questions? Okay. And I'll keep you posted and updated um, with that. And then for uh, Terry talking about Wakefield, yes, so the the parks are usage just exploding. Our shelter rentals and our field usage permits are back to pre-COVID um, numbers, actually maybe even a little bit more because people are just wanting to get outside and reserving fields and um, shelters. So we are we are very, very busy trying to fill those permits and get people at the shelters um, and the Wakefield building, our first rental, we needed to make sure we had some staff in place and the guidelines, as you know, were all over the place. And now that they've lifted pretty much everything, it's kind of, we, we did a lot of practice and then we won't be using any of it when the building actually opens, but that's okay because it means we're moving in the right direction. Uh, the first rental of the Wakefield building is May 29th and then we're booking, booking out the rest of the season. Uh, Wakefield has the two shelters and they are booked Saturday and Sunday, both of them, every pretty much every weekend of the summer now. So with that park usage comes a lot more um, cleanup. And with the Wakefield building, that patio, we don't let people reserve that so the public can use it with the grills that are out there and they can sit out there. And that is packed every, pretty much every day someone is out there. And on the weekends, it's packed. So it's another 
free space for families to gather, but it's, it's a lot. Our park maintenance crew is working really hard and doing extra trash pickup and um, filling a dumpster just for the two days on the weekend, just at Wakefield with, with all the trash. So there are a lot of people at the park that aren't reserving the shelters. They're still there and we're happy people are using it, but it's just amazing how much people are out in the parks. So any, any questions about that? No. And if anyone just for the public is watching, if you're interested in adopting a park and wanting to help with park cleanup, we, we would love to have you. So um, just having a few extra hands during the week to help with, with just making sure the parks stay, stay beautiful. <laughs> so, um, and then I wanted to give you an update just yesterday afternoon, I got noticed that the new observation deck at the nature center is done. So if you haven't been out to the nature center in a while to walk the trails, the three bridges were done, and now the observation deck is completely replaced with new seating. So I wasn't able to get a picture because it just got the notice it was finished yesterday afternoon. But I will, um, I can bring a picture or send it to you after the meeting just so you can see it if you can't get out there. So we're over halfway done with those improvements, so I'm excited about that. And, and then we are going to have our first in-person class at the Nature Center. And that will be on June 4th. It was going to be a webinar, but it's now going to be in person. Um, and it'll be going out in the living. It's free. Um, and it's uh, tree care and shrub pruning basics. It's part of um, educate the community education piece to satisfy our EAB grant that we got for uh, replanting trees. And so Carol Gurness, our natural resources coordinator, is going to be leading that class from 630 to 815 at the Nature Center inside for the first part and then going out and doing some actual hands-on unless the weather's bad, it'll be all indoors. So that'll be the first activity happening at the Nature Center in quite a while. So we're excited Yay. about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it's, and th so that would be an update on nat Nature Center Task Force. That's one thing that we've done is we're, we're um, trying to you know get some programs and things happening in that building. And then as far as Recreation Task Force, um, we had another programming meeting, Neil Brenneman, our recreation supervisor and myself with uh, staff from the YMCA, just to talk about what programming they think they have coming up more and, and how we can help facilitate what's happening in Maplewood and promote it. So they are going to be sending us their the program information and we'll be putting it in the living and on our social media and our website. And right now it's they did one three on three basketball league and they had a total of 12 kids sign up. So they had four teams um, and the tennis camps are still happening in June and August. But um, in addition to that, they're going to be adding another session of the basketball, but we, we hope that soccer will be coming. They said that they'll be pulling something together for soccer. So as soon as I get that information, I'll share it with you. Um, and we can get that out for um, residents to be able to sign up and then just moving forward with any programming that they do. And in the meantime, our Northeast United, our, our soccer association that we partner with, they did offer a, a recreational soccer program, and, and we've been promoting that and helping with sign up there. So just trying to get kids connected to sports when we can, since we're not doing the programming ourselves right now. And NEU, by the way, has a big, their big tournament is back on. They didn't do it last year, but it's going to be in full force. That's the first weekend in June. Um at Hazelwood and some of the sites at the school district. So it's their big tournament and we're in the middle of finalizing the details for that and getting the fields ready. So it's exciting to see stuff happening and, and being almost too busy, but that's a good thing after the year we had last year. So, um, and that's really it for the updates for this month. But if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Any questions? Audra, I do have one. Sure. Uh, while you were talking about the YMCA, um, and you may not have this information, but if we could find out, there were uh, were some memberships given out uh, about two or three years ago, and I'm just wondering if that program is still available during the summer. For oh, for youth for for the teens. Yes. Yeah. Let me. I will. I will find out, and I can let you know. So I remember Thank they you. gave free free memberships to teens just to make sure they had a a safe place to be active during the summer. So, yeah. So important. Yes. I will absolutely check and get back to you. Well, then, okay. Thank you, 
Okay. Um, commissioners, and welcome our new people. Um, I see we're at 7.04. <laughs> we generally can get our meeting in an hour, and uh, we do pretty well with that. We do. Um, I ask for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thanks. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go, go out into the rain. Thank you. See you <laughs> next month. Thank Maybe next month. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. 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 Audra?